Okay, hi everybody. Um, this set of slides is going to go over color blindness, which impacts between five and eight percent of males in our in our uh, country. So there's basically remember three different types of cells that make up the cones in your retina. Some are receptive of red wavelengths, some of green, and some of blue. Um, three different types of cells with different photoreceptors. Most people that are affected with color blindness are missing one or more of these cones, or the cells are malfunctioning in some way, which means they might not be able to distinguish between certain pairs of colors in the same way someone with all three functioning cones can. Um, there are three basic types of color blindness. Um, protonopia, uh, it's the inability to perceive red or sometimes a reduced sensitivity to red wavelengths. Um, and it can make purple seem blue. Deuteranopia uh, is the inability to perceive green or reduced sensitivity to green, um, which can make green look brown, as you can see here. Tritonopia is the ability to perceive blue, um, making yellow seem red. This is really rare. Red and green color blindness are by far the most common and are usually grouped together and called color blindness because people with these kinds of deficiencies see color in a very similar way. Um, like I said, blue yellow color blindness is very rare, um, but you can see how similar these two um, versions of quote unquote normal um, colors would appear to people with either red or green color blindness. Okay, so remember I was talking about how the rainbow color ramp is fairly indistinguishable for somebody with red-green color blindness. It looks more like a, um, a divergent color ramp. Well, so just so you know, in these set of slides, I'm going to show you a bunch of quote-unquote normal, meaning this is what it would look like to people with fully functioning red, blue, green photoreceptive cones, um, and then what they would look like if some of those cones were impaired in some way. So again, you can see how similar um, red weakness or green weakness is, um, and, and really what, um, what a weird view it would be if you were trying to use the rainbow color ramp and distinguish between like red and green, for example, and they just look like shades of each other. So again, um, just some examples so you can see what it would look like if somebody with um, red or green deficiency was trying to decode a map like this. Instead of seeing a divergent color ramp with um, very high, medium, and very low in green, it would appear as a sequential color ramp, except um, it wouldn't. It would be divergent with indistinguishable um, poles. So, um, again, showing you some standard color schemes and how they appear with um, someone with CVD or color vision deficiency. Um, this is a standard heat color ramp. Um, you can see it's got a clear gradient from dark to light, um, no matter what uh, kind of deficiency someone might have. So this is a very safe kind of color ramp to use, very safe and se sequential. Anything that's going from light to dark um, as long as the colors don't interfere with the message, is going to be pretty safe. For divergent color schemes, you have to be really careful. You can see that the blue to green is much safer for both types of CVD because the opposite colors are still distinguishable. With the red to green color ramp, we run into that problem with it looking monotone when um, the opposing values are being compared. It's really hard to tell them apart. So, you know, we have to be careful using colors for color blindness reasons, but also imparting bias, um, you know, good and bad, safe, dangerous, um, but then we have like, you know, water issues or, um, you know, there, there's a lot of intuition that has to go into it as well. So your job is to juggle all of these balls at once. <laughs> Okay, so this is an example of redundant encoding. The bar direction shows us profits to the right and losses to the left from the zero point on the scale. 
and color is encoding the same thing. There are people that say that redundant coding is a, encoding is a big no-no, but um, I am definitely of the opposite opinion. I say that if it makes your message easier to convey, uh, moves it into the pre-attentive camp, then no harm, no foul. But you don't want to use color just because either. Um, you know, profit loss, moving things into the black, into the red, there's um, bias there as well. So you just want to be careful that you're using color for solid reasons, um, not just to get attention. Um, but yeah, uh, redundant encoding, I think, is sometimes a way to make messages easier to ingest. Uh, one thing you can do to prevent this is just A, be aware, B, go searching for safe color palettes. Um, designers and programmers have developed hundreds of color schemes that work really well for both types of CVD. Um, and there are simulation websites you can upload images to in order to test for readability. Um, like this one here, colorblindness, color-blindness.com is one I use all the time. You take a JPEG, you can just take a screenshot of a graphic that you're working on or um, whatever it is, uh, upload it to the website, and then you can just click through and see what it would look like if it's a deficiency or a blindness um, and test for the different um, malfunctioning cones. Um, there are also apps that you can download or upload to your phone um, where you can actually use the camera to look at your graphs and charts and and choose to simulate different kinds of um, color vision deficiency. So it's, it's absolutely true that color can be a challenging design element to perfect. It takes a lot of experience, a lot of practice, and a trained eye to produce maps and graphs with effective color schemes. But these rules should help make it easier. So keep all of these issues in mind um, as you refine your charts and maps, and most importantly, never accept the default colors. They're never going to be the best choice. Okay, that's it.